routes are how we can go about defining particular URLs that will be accessible within our application. So in order to add a page to our application, we have to define a route for that page and what URL that route should be accessible via and what in particular our server should do whenever that route is requested. So by default, Adonis starts our route definitions within the start directory under routes.ts. And as we saw earlier in the series, we have a single default route definition here for our welcome page. So what we're doing here is we're importing the route module from Adonis core route, and we're calling a particular HTTP method to define a URL using that particular HTTP method. So in this case, we're saying anytime that a user sends a get request, for the home page, we want to perform this route handler action. And in the last lesson, whenever we covered our HTTP context, we learned that the route handler is past our HTTP context object, which contains unique information about that single individual request. And that's what we were extending right here. So if we can get rid of that. So with our server running, if we actually head into our browser and head to the home page of our application, we're going to get that exact welcome page that we have that single defined route for. However, if we try to go to any other route within our application at this point in time, we're going to get a 404 that route cannot be found error. So if we head back into our route definitions and we then define a get request, since we're requesting a page for that particular route, and then we can define how we want that route to be handled. And for right now, let's just return working. We can then head back into our application, refresh the page, and you'll see that now since we have a route definition for our test page, we're going to get back whatever our route handler tells our server to handle that route with. In this case, we're just sending back working. We can do the same thing using an HTTP client. Here I'm using Insomnia. If we send a get request for our home page here, what we're going to do is we're going to see back exactly what we saw in the browser. If we send a get request for our test page, Again, we'll see exactly what we saw in the browser. Now, in addition to defining routes for just get requests, we can also define routes for post, put, patch, and delete. And what these allow us to do is define similar route paths for different expected actions. Okay, so here I've stubbed out a couple of different route definitions, all for posts. And you'll see that a couple of them are actually the exact same as one another. So we have slash posts, which is shared by a get and a post request. And then we have slash post one, which is shared by a get, put, and a delete request. Now, the reason that we can have the same URL definition for each of these different route definitions is because they have different HTTP methods attached to the particular route definition. So if we send a get request for slash posts one, Adonis is going to know to match this route. Whereas if we send a post request for slash post one, it will match this route. And then again, if we send a delete request, it would match this one. So typically with this sort of route approach, the get for slash posts would be to list out all posts. A get for slash post one would be to list out a single post which has an ID of one or some unique identifier of one. A post for slash posts would be to create a new post record, again, whether that be in our database or somewhere else. A put would be to mutate an existing record for a single post with an ID of one or some unique identifier of one, and then a delete for deleting a single record with a unique identifier of one. So these different HTTP methods of get, post, put patch, and delete, put patch do the exact same thing, they're for mutating an existing record, uh, allow us to define similar routes for different various actions. Now there's also another route definition that we could do as well called any, and what this will do is it will match any of the HTTP methods. So with any, it would match the request, whether we have a get, post, put, patch, or delete request sending through. Now, another thing to note here is that you don't want to have multiple route definitions here. So you can see that we have now a route.any for slash posts, which is going to match this route here and this route here within our route definitions. And so we cannot have duplicate route definitions defined, otherwise our server is going to throw an error. So to resolve this, I'm just going to comment out this any for right now so that we can move on. So there's one last method off of our route module that allows us to easily define a particular route definition, and that is the on method. Now the on method only accepts one single argument, and that is a pattern. So for example, here we could do testing, and what this on method chains off of it is three different useful methods. One to just render out a page. So for example, we could just render out our welcome page using this approach. So now if we save this, head back into our server and we head to testing, we're going to get our welcome page. 
And you'll notice that we did not need to define a route handler the way that we are with our home page or this test page up here. Uh, in addition to that, we could also redirect a user within our application. So using the redirect method, we could redirect the user to another page that our application has defined. So we could do slash test here, for example. So if we head back into our browser, refresh, you'll see now we're redirected to our test page from testing, or we can redirect to a URL outside of our application here. So for example, we could do duck, duck, go. So now if we save this, head back into our browser and re-request testing, you'll see now we're redirected to duck, duck, go from our application. And I actually believe since I created this application, this has been changed from redirect to path to redirect to URL. So I'm going to get the red squiggly, but I believe at this point in time, this is actually called redirect to URL instead of redirect to path. So just note that little change there. Okay. So at this point in time, we've covered the different methods within the route module that we can use to define particular route paths within our application. Uh, starting in the next lesson, we're going to be focusing particularly on the path definition by going over route parameters. So we'll be able to add dynamic parameters within our URLs so we can get rid of like this hard coded one within posts and add in a dynamic ID or slug in its place.